Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm talking about speakers. In particular, these. These are the Alto TrueSonic TS-115A, and these are active PA speakers. Now, these particular speakers have a bit of a problem. Now, I bought these a while back, and I need to use them for a disco, so I'm going to have to do some work on these. One of the speakers has a problem with overheating, which I think is something to do with the fan control circuit. When the speaker gets hot, you hear an audible clicking, which you can hear above the music. That's not very good. If it really overheats, it can cut out. That could be a disaster during the middle of a set. So I'm going to have to get the active speaker modules out of these and get them on the bench and see what's going on with them because I need to be using these speakers all night long. Now, the great thing is I have one good speaker, so I'm going to take the module out of that as well. That will give me a comparison against the other one see if we can see what the problem is. What I do know is one of the previous owners has had a try at fixing the problem, but unsuccessfully. So let's get both these modules on the bench and see what lies inside. All right, let's have a look. Now, they're pretty heavy, but then I've never met a PA speaker that isn't. Right, now, this is what's causing me the problem here. This is the active speaker amplifier module. So this is gonna need to come out there are 12 screws holding this in place. So let's get this out. I haven't got room for doing this one on the bench. Right, let's pop this out. It's got to disconnect the front panel LED. That's it. And the speaker cables. Inside here is what's causing me all the problems. So I need to get the other one out of the other speaker and get them both on the bench. Okay, Alto speaker module number one. This is the one that is supposed to be the good one. So firstly, just get the screws out and there are a fair few on this. And then the fan screws can come out. Flip this over. Just remove the earth tag from the metal box. And remove that cable just to make it a bit easier to work on. Two little plugs on the end there to come out. And then more screws to deal with. We need to get inside this metal box to see what's going on. Let's get these out. And then that just pulls off and remove the plug for the fan. And now we can see what's happening inside. Let's just pop this fan over here before I lose it. Now, let's have a little look. Oh, there's the fan gasket. We'll need that later. Right. Now, this speaker module works perfectly well with no problems. I just wanted to open it up just for a visual inspection inside check. There's nothing obvious, no obvious problems. And it's also a great comparison with the faulty unit. On first inspection, nothing obvious. Copious amounts of goop on the board, presumably to stop vibration from the speakers. Ultimately a good thing, but can make it a little bit more of a chore working on these kind of boards. All seems to be in reasonable shape inside. No obvious signs of anything that's blown or looks burnt. That's always a good thing. Now this module has a fully working fan control circuit, which is the problem on the other unit. Here we see the diode for the fan control. That's D121, the number obscured by this cable here. So we know that D121, which is the fan control diode, is present on this unit. We also know that it's been removed apparently from the faulty unit. So this is the one I'm going to have to replace on the other unit. D126 is not fitted on this particular model, so we haven't got to worry about that one. So we've had a look in the good one. Let's get the faulty one apart and see what lurks inside. Same again, remove the two plugs there, pull those out. So we've got some room to work and remove all the screws. There's a lot of screws in these. Right, now we can pull the fan off and the fan's not actually connected to anything. And on closer inspection, doesn't even have a plug on the end of the wire for the fan. Now I know this one's been worked on before as it had the fault with the fan and was overheating, causing the speaker to cut out, which is not a good thing when you're trying to do a disco. 
So let's have a look in here and it's a bit of a different story. You can see where it's been worked on. There's some capped on tape left on a couple of the caps there. Now you can see the comparison against the two modules. Obviously both exactly the same, both TS-115As. Let's get the microscope on it and take a closer look inside. So when we look at our fan control diode, it is indeed a very different story from the other module, D121 missing completely. And that pad is really not looking good. Do you see the surface of the board has been eroded there? Now that pad is connected onto D126, which you can see from the circuit diagram. So I'm wondering if I can get away with putting the diode diagonally across the pads. I might give that a go. I've just tested the fan from the faulty unit and as I suspected, not even working. So that's gonna need to be replaced. Okay, let's get this little diode in place, making sure I've got the polarity right. Solder that in there. Okay, there's our replacement D121 in place. Not the most elegant solution, almost like parking across two bays, but it will do the job. A quick test shows that we seem to be getting some power from the fan terminals, so the circuit does seem to be doing something. This is a good sign. Now we have a nice new fan here. So a quick test of this to make sure we're all good. Yep, all looking good. Excellent. Same spec as the old fan, so it's going to move enough air and keep this thing cool. Let's whiz the old fan out, which is totally no good. Now, whether it's the failure of the fan that caused the diode to go, or whether there's another issue, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to find out. So let's get the new fan in. Not forgetting, of course, the fan gasket. Fantastic. Just going to do a quick check just to make sure I've got the fan facing the right way. Nothing worse than getting it all together and finding you face the fan out the wrong way. You do it once, you never do it again. Yep, that's all good. Excellent. Right, before I put this back together, I'm just going to check there isn't any particular hot spots on this board. As I don't have a thermal image camera, I'm just using my digital thermometer and it gives me an indication of if anything's running particularly hot. Well, hotter than it should anyway. All seems good, so let's get this back in one piece. So I'm going to connect these up and I'm going to give them a little test to see how they go. Okay, so having run both speakers for a few hours, I can see that they're still running hotter than I would like. The back of the panel is a little bit warm to the touch and, and the fans don't seem to be running particularly fast on either unit. So there's a little bit of mystery surrounding the fan controller circuit in these Altos. Now I've had a delve around on various forums and spoken to other people that have these speakers and it seems there are some reliability issues with the fan control on these. Now the last thing I need is for these speakers to be going off during a gig. That would be a disaster. So I'm going to have to find a way of cooling these speakers a little bit more reliably. So I think a slight modification to these is in order. And you know how I like a slight modification. So what I intend to do as this particular range of speakers runs hot, one of the suggested modifications is to have the fans running all the time. Now, I don't want these fans running at full tilt. It'll be like having a server on the go. So I'm going to fit a Zener diode in series with the fan to take the speed down. So what is a Zener diode? For those that don't know, it's a special kind of diode that breaks down at a set voltage in the reverse direction. Normally, for an ordinary diode, this would be a bad thing. We wouldn't want it to do that. But these Zener diodes are specially made, so their reverse voltage is at set values. The diode breaks down and starts conducting at its rated Zener voltage. And this is called the avalanche effect. 
Now I don't want to lose too much voltage, so as the fans are 12 volt, I'm going to pick the lowest Zeno diode I've got, which is 2.7 volts. Slim pickings, as you can see in my Zeno diode stock at the moment. So connected to a 12 volt power supply line, I will end up with 12 volts minus 2.7 volts. So that equals 9.3 volts on the fan. So using Ohm's law, if we take the 12 volts and divide it by the fan's current draw of 0.3 amps, we get 40 ohms for the resistance of the fan motor coil. As you can see, volts divided by amps equals resistance. So we're going to run the fan at 9.3 volts because we're going to use a 2.7 volt Zeno diode. Now, I want to work out how much power is going to go through the Zeno diode so we don't burn it out. We don't want any more failing diodes on these speakers. I have a 1.3 watt Zeno diode here, so hopefully that will be enough. So we take the 9.3 volts that we're going to be running the fan at and we divide it by the resistance of the fan motor coil, which we know is 40 ohms. And that equals 225 milliamps or 0.225 of an amp. In other words, volts divided by resistance equals current. So next we take the current the fan will draw and we multiply that by the voltage across the Zeno diode to see how much power the Zeno diode is going to dissipate. So 2.7 volts of the Zeno diode times 0.225 amps equals approximately 0.608 watts. So volts multiplied by current equals power. So our Zeno diode that we've got here is rated at 1.3 watts and 0.6 watts is only half its rated power so we will within its specs this one's going to be fine. Right now I need to find a 12 volt rail and get this in. Okay so the only 12 volt point I can find is these two little pads down here which give the 12 volt supply to the microphone input pre-amplifier. So I'm going to go off of that because everything else in here seems to be either plus or minus 15 volts. That's the only place I can get 12 volts. So I'm going to go on these two pads. I'm just going to solder the diode onto the wire. Just a proof of concept. I might do something a little bit more glamorous once I've tested it. Just got to get that diode soldered onto the plus 12 volt pad there. That's it. It's not elegant, but it will do the job. So let's get the lid on and give it a test. Right now, all we've got to do is get all the screws back in yet again. OK, let's get these back in once again and have another go. Well, there we go. Our fan seems to be running nicely. It's running at a constant speed. I'm going to leave these on test for a few hours. So I've had these on test again for a few hours and I'm quite happy that the fans are running not too loud. The temperature of the speakers is considerably cooler, up to five degrees cooler measuring it on the back of the case compared to when we had the fan control running. So these are going to get used in venues that are sometimes hot. They're going to get used in DJ booths that are hot and have a lot of other equipment running in, which is generating a lot of heat. So if I can keep these babies running cool, then I'm hoping they're going to be nice and reliable. So having had them on test here for a few hours now, I'm happy that all is good. I'm going to take them out to a venue and give them a try. I'm pleased to report that the Altos behaved themselves quite nicely. No overheating, no sound problems. They sounded great and more importantly, everyone had a great night.
So I'd say that was a successful modification. Now I've got myself another decent set of working PA speakers that I know I can rely on. They're not going to overheat and cause me problems. Now that to me has got to be a winner. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Massive thanks to everyone for watching, liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. It's always massively appreciated. I'll be back soon with some more videos on test gear repairs, retro gaming and electronics kits. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.